small and large intestines, introduction, the intestine, which is the longest part of the digestive tube, is divided into long, less distensible, small intestine, and shorter, more distensible large intestine. Food has to be digested, ureated, and stored for expulsion in the intestines. Intestines suffer from bacterial infection like typhoid, tuberculosis, parasitic infection, like roundworm, tapeworm, etc. in addition to diarrhea and dysentery. Good and healthy eating habits definitely prevent some of these conditions. The proximal one and a half parts of duodenum, including liver, gallbladder, and pancreas, develop from foregut. The distal two and a half parts of duodenum, jejunum, ileum, cecum, appendix, ascending colon, and right two thirds of transverse colon develop from midgut. Lastly, the left one third of transverse colon, descending colon, pelvic colon, and proximal part of rectum develop from hindgut. Small intestine The small intestine extends from the pylorus to the iliacecal junction. It is about 6 meters long. The length is greater in males than in females, and greater in cadavers, due to loss of tone than in the living. It is divided into, L and upper, fixed part, called the duodenum, which measures about 25 cm in length. To a lower, mobile part, forming a very long convoluted tube. The upper two-fifths of the mobile intestine are known as the jejunum, and the lower three-fifths are known as the ileum. The structure of the small intestine is adapted for digestion and absorption. Relevant features, large surface area. For absorption of digested food a very large surface area is required. This is achieved by, a the great length of the intestine. b the presence of circular folds of mucous membrane, villi, and microvilli. The circular folds of mucous membrane, plice circulates, or valves of Kirk ring form complete or incomplete circles. These folds are permanent, and are not obliterated by distension. They begin in the second part of the duodenum, and become large and closely set below the level of the major duodenal papilla. They continue to be closely set in the proximal half of the jejunum, but diminish progressively in size and number in the distal half of the jejunum and in the proximal half of the ileum. They are almost absent in the distal half of the ileum. Apart from increasing the surface area for absorption, the circular folds facilitate absorption by slowing down the passage of intestinal contents. The intestinal villi are finger-like projections of mucous membrane, just visible to the naked eye. They give the surface of the intestinal mucosa a velvety appearance. They are large and numerous in the duodenum and jejunum, but are smaller and fewer in the ileum. They vary in density from 10 to 40 per square millimeter, and are about 1 to 2 millimeters long. They increase the surface area of the small intestine about 8 times. Each villus is covered by a layer of absorptive columnar cells. The surface of these cells has a striated border which is seen, under the electron microscope to be made of microvilli. Intestinal glands or crypts of Lieberkuhn, these are simple tubular glands distributed over the entire mucous membrane of the jejunum and ileum. They open by small circular apertures on the surface of mucous membrane between the villi. They secrete digestive enzymes and mucus. The epithelial cells deep in the crypts show a high level of mitotic activity. The promerat cells gradually move towards the surface, zero to be shed from the tips of the villi. In this way, the complete epithelial lining of the intestine is replaced every two to four days. The duodenal glands or Brunner's glands lie in the submucosa. These are small, compound tubulosinar glands which secrete mucus. Lymphotic follicles, the mucous membrane of the small intestine contains two types of lymphatic follicles. The solitary lymphic follicles are 1 to 2 mm in diameter, and are distributed throughout the small and large intestines. The aggregated lymphatic follicles or pyres patches form circular or oval patches, varying in length from 2 to 10 cm and containing 10 to over 200 follicles. They are largest and most numerous in the ileum, and are small, circular, and fewer in the distal jejunum. They are placed lengthwise along the untum's enteric border of the intestine. Pyres patches get ulcerated in typhoid fever, 
forming oval ulcers with their long axes along the long axis of the bowel. Both the solitary and aggregated lymphatic follicles are most numerous at puberty, but thereafter diminish in size and number, although they may persist up to old age. Each villus has a central lymph vessel called a factual. Lymph from lacteals drains into plex uses in the walls of the gut and from there to regional lymph nodes. Arterial supply, the arterial supply to jejunum and ileum is derived from the jejunal and ileal branches of the superior mesenteric artery. The rosa recta are distributed alternately to the opposite surfaces of the gut. They run between the serous and muscular coats, and give off numerous branches which supply and pierce the muscular coat and form a plexus in the submucosa. From this plexus, minute branches pass to the glands and villi. Lymphatics, the lymphatics, lacteals, have a circular course in the walls of the intestine. Tuberculous ulcers and subsequent strictures are due to involvement of these lymphatics. Large lymphatic vessels formed at the mesenteric border pass to the mesenteric lymph nodes. Nerve supply, the nerve supply of the small intestine is sympathetic, T9 to T11, as well as parasympathetic, vagus, both of which pass through the coeliac and superior mesenteric plex uses. The nerves form the myenteric plexus of Auerbach, containing parasympathetic ganglia between circular and longitudinal muscle coats. Fibers from this plexus form the submucous plexus of Meissner which also contains parasympathetic ganglia sympathetic nerves are motor to the sphincters and to the muscularis mucosi, and inhibitory for peristaltic movements. The parasympathetic nerves stimulate persistalsis but inhibit the sphincters. The nerve plex uses and neurotransmitters of the gut are quite complex. This is called the enteric nerves. Function The junction of the small intestine comprises digestion and absorption of the digested contents from the food. The parts of the small intestine are considered one by one. Duodenum Dissection Examine the C-shaped duodenum and head of pancreas lying in its concavity. Cut through the lower wall of the first part extending the cut on medial wall of second and upper wall of third part of duodenum to see its interior. Carefully look for the longitudinal fold on the posteromedial wall below the middle of second part. The longitudinal fold is often covered by a circular fold containing orifice of the major duodenal papilla draining both the bile and pancreatic ducts. Identify and dissect the structures related to all the four parts of the duodenum term. The term duodenum is a Latin corruption of the Greek word, dudicatactylos, meaning 12 fingers long. Definition and location The duodenum is the shortest, widest, and most fixed part of the small intestine. It extends from the pylorus to duodenojejunal flexure. It is curved around the head of pancreas in the form of letter C. The duodenum lies above the level of umbilicus, opposite first, second and third lumbar vertebrae. Length and ports, duodenum is 25 cm long and is divided into the following four parts. One first or superior part, 5 cm or 2 inches long. Two second or descending part, 7.5 cm or 3 inches long. Three third or horizontal part, 10 cm or 4 inches long. 4 fourth or ascending part, 2.5 cm or 1 inch long. Peritoneal relations, the duodenum is mostly retroperitoneal and fixed, except at its two ends where it is suspended by folds of peritoneum, and is, therefore, mobile. Anteriorly, the duodenum is only partly covered with peritoneum. First part, the first part begins at the pylorus, and passes backwards, upwards, and to the right to meet the second part at the superior duodenal flexure. Its relations are as follows. Peritoneal relations, 1 The proximal 2.5 cm is movable. It is attached to the lesser omentum above, and to the greater omentum below. 2 The distal 2.5 cm is fixed. It is retroperitoneal. It is covered with peritoneum only on its anterior aspect. Visceral relations. Anteriorly, quadrate lobe of liver, and gallbladder. Posteriorly, gastroduodenal artery, bile duct, and portal vein. Superiorly, epiploic foramen. Inferiorly, head and neck of the pancreas. Second part, course, 
This part is about 7.5 cm long. It begins at the superior duodenal flexure, passes downwards to reach the lower border of the third lumbar vertebra, where it curves towards the left at the inferior duodenal flexure, to become continuous with the third part. Its relations are as follows. Peritoneal relations, it is retroperitoneal and fixed. Its anterior surface is covered with peritoneum, except near the middle, where it is directly related to the colon. Visceral relations, anteriorly, one right lobe of the liver. Two transverse colon. Three root of the transverse mesocolon. Four small intestine. Posteriorly, one anterior surface of the right kidney near the medial border. Two right renal vessels. 3 right edge of the anterior vena cava. 4 right poas major. Medially. 1 head of the pancreas. 2 the bile duct. Laterally, right colic flexure. The interior of the second part of the duodenum show the following special features. A. The major duodenal papilla is an elevation present posteromedially, 8 to 10 cm distal to the pylorus. The hepatopancreatic ampulla opens at the summit of the papilla. B. The minor duodenal papilla is present 6 to 8 cm distal to the pylorus, and presents the opening of the accessory pancreatic duct. C. Below major duodenal papilla, a longitudinal fold called plica longitudinalis is seen. Third part, course, this part is about 10 cm long. It begins at the inferior duodenal flexure, on the right side of the lower border of the third lumbar vertebra. It passes almost horizontally and slightly upwards in front of the inferior vena cava, and ends by joining the fourth part in front of the abdominal aorta. Its relations are as follows. Peritoneal relations, it is retroperitoneal and fixed. Its anterior surface is covered with peritoneum, except in the median plane, where it is crossed by the superior mesenteric vessels and by the root of the mesentery. Visceral relations, anteriorly, one superior mesenteric vessels. Two root of mesentery. Posteriorly, right ureter and right psoas major. One right testicular or ovarian vessels. Two interior vena cava. Three abdominal aorta with origin of inferior mesenteric artery. Superiorly, head of the pancreas with uncinate process. Inferiorly, coils of jejunum. Fourth part, course, this part is 2.5 cm long. It runs upwards on or immediately to the left of the aorta, up to the upper border of the second lumbar vertebra, where it turns forwards to become continuous with the jejunum at the duodeno-jejunal flexure. Its relations are as follows. Peritoneal relations, it is mostly retroperitoneal, and covered with peritoneum only anteriorly. The terminal part is suspended by the uppermost part of the mesentery, and is mobile. Visceral relations, anteriorly, L transverse colon. 2 transverse mesocolon. 3 lesser sac. 4 stomach. Posteriorly, 1 left sympathetic chain. 2 left renal artery. 3 left gonadal artery. 4 inferior mesenteric vein. To the right, attachment of the upper part of the root of the mesentery. To the left. 1 left kidney. 2 left ureter. Superiorly, body of pancreas. Suspensory muscle of duodenum or ligament of TREITZY. This is a fibromuscular band which suspends and supports the duodeno jejunal flexure. It arises from the left cruise of the diaphragm close to the right side of the esophagus, passes downwards behind the pancreas, and is attached to the posterior surface of the duodeno-jejunal flexure and the third and fourth parts of the duodenum. It is made up of, A striped muscle fibers in its S upper part, B elastic fibers in its S middle part, C plain muscle fibers in its S lower part. Normally its contraction increases the angle of the duodeno-jejunal flexure. Sometimes it is attached only to the flexure, and then its contraction may narrow the angle of the flexure, causing partial obstruction of the gut. Arterial supply, the duodenum develops partly from the foregut and partly from the midgut. The opening of the bile duct into the second part of the duodenum represents the junction of the foregut and the midgut. 
up to the level of the opening, the duodenum is supplied by the superior pancreaticoduodenal artery, and below it by the error pancreaticoduodenal artery. The first part of the duodenum receives additional supply from, a the right gastric artery. b the superduodenal artery of Wilkie, which is usually a branch of the common hepatic artery. c the retroduodenal branches of the gastroduodenal artery. d some branches from the right gastroepiploic artery. venous drainage, the veins of the duodenum drain into the splenic, superior mesenteric and portal veins. lymphatic drainage, E most of the lymph vessels from the duodenum end in the pancreaticoduodenal nodes present along the inside of the curve of the duodenum, i.e. at the junction of the pancreas and the duodenum. From here the lymph passes partly to the hepatic nodes, and through them to the coeliac nodes, and partly to the superior mesenteric nodes and ultimately via intestinal lymph trunk into the cisterna chyli. Some vessels from the first part of the duodenum drain into the pyloric nodes, and through them to the hepatic nodes. All the lymph reaching the hepatic nodes drains into the coeliac nodes. Nerve supply, sympathetic nerves from thoracic 9th and 10th spinal segments and parasympathetic nerves from the vagus, pass through the coeliac plexus and reach the duodenum along its arteries. Histology, mucus marine brone, shows evaginations in the form of villi and invaginations to form crypts of Lieberkuhn. Lining of villi is of columnar cells with microvilli. Muscularis mucosi comprises two layers. Submucosa is full of mucus secreting Brenner's glands. The muscularis externa comprise outer longitudinal and inner secular layer of muscle fibers. Outermost layer is mostly connective tissue. A in the skyogram taken after giving a barium meal, the first part of the duodenum is seen as a triangular shadow called the duodenal cap. B. The first part of the duodenum is one of the commonest sites for peptic ulcer, possibly because of direct exposure of this part to the acidic contents reaching it from the stomach. The patient is usually an overbusy young person with a tense temperament. The ulcer pain located at the right half of epigastrium once relieved by meals and reappears on an empty stomach. C. The first part of duodenum is overlapped by the liver and gallbladder, either of which may become adherent to or even ulcerated by a duodenal ulcer. Other clinically important relations of duodenum are the right kidney and transverse colon. Duodenal diverticula are fairly frequent. They are seen along its concave border, generally at points where arteries enter the duodenal wall. Congenital stenosis and obstruction of the second part of the duodenum may occur at the site of the opening of the bile duct. Other causes of obstruction are an annular pancreas. Pressure by the superior mesenteric artery on the third part of duodenum. Contraction of the suspensory muscle of the duodenum. Duodenal carcinoma jejunum and ileum. Dissection. For examining the jejunum and ileum, lie a pair of ligatures around the jejunum close to the duodeno-jejunal flexure and a pair around the ileum close to the cecum. Cut through the small intestine between each pair of ligatures and remove it by dividing the mesentery close to the intestine. Wash intestine with running tap water. Remove 10 cm each of jejunum and ileum and open it longitudinally. Remove the peritoneal coat to expose the longitudinal muscle layer. Identify villi with a hand lens. Remove only the mucous membrane and submucosa to see the underlying circular muscle coat. Examine the differences between jejunum and ileum. Features the jejunum and ileum are suspended from the posterior abdominal wall by the mesentery and therefore, enjoy considerable mobility. The jejunum constitutes the upper two-fifths of the mobile part of the small intestine, while the ileum constitutes the lower three-fifths. The jejunum begins at the duodeno-jejunal flexure. The ileum terminates at the iliacecal junction. The structure and functions of the jejunum and ileum correspond to the general description of the small intestine. The differences between the jejunum and the ileum are given in table. Blood supply, the jejunum and ileum are supplied by branches from the superior mesenteric artery, and are drained by corresponding veins. Lymphotic drainage, lymph from lacteals drains into plex uses in the wall of the gut. From there it passes into lymphatic vessels in the mesentery. Passing through numerous lymph nodes present in the mesentery, and along the superior mesenteric artery, 
it ultimately drains into nodes present in front of the aorta at the origin of the superior mesenteric artery. Nerve supply, sympathetic nerves are from T9 T1 L segments and parasympathetic is from vagus. Histology, jejunum, the villi here are tongue shaped. No mucous glands or aggregated lymphoid follicles are present in the submucosa. Muscularis externa is same as in duodenum. Outermost is the serous layer. Ilium, the villi are few, thin and finger-like. Collection of lymphocytes in the form of pingers patches in lamina propria extending into submucosa is a characteristic feature. Rest is same as above. Meckel's diverticulum, diverticulum ilei, Meckel's diverticulum is the persistent proximal part of the vitellointestinal duct which is present in the embryo, and which normally disappears during the sixth week of intrauterine life. Some points of interest about it are as follows. 1. It occurs in 2% subject. 2. Usually it is 2 inches or 5 centimeters long. It is situated about 2 feet or 60 centimeters proximal to the iliacecal valve, attached to untum's enteric border of the ilium. 1. Its S caliber is equal to that of the ilium. 1. Its apex may be free or may be attached to the umbilicus, to the mesentery, or to any other abdominal structure by a fibrous band. Clinical anatomy. Meckel's diverticulum may cause intestinal obstruction. Occasionally it may have small regions of gastric mucosa. Acute inflammation of the diverticulum may produce symptoms that resemble those of appendicitis. It may be involved in other diseases similar to those of the intestine. Dissection. Locate the various parts of large intestine, beginning from cecum, vermiform appendix, ascending, transverse, descending and sigmoid colons and ending with the rectum and anal canal. Identify the tenia, haustration, and appendices epiploici. Trace the tenia from the root of the vermiform appendix through the ascending to the transverse colon and note the change in their respective positions. Features, the large intestine extends from the iliacecal junction to the anus. It is about blind 1.5 m long, and is divided into the cecum, Latin blind pofloc slash t, the ascending colon, right colic flexure, the transverse colon, left colic flexure, the descending colon, the sigmoid colon, the rectum, and the anal canal. In the angle between the cecum and the terminal part of the ilium there is a narrow diverticulum called the vermiform appendix, Latin attachment, dot the general structure of large intestine is considered first followed by it s parts one by one. The structure of the large intestine is adapted for storage of matter reaching it from the small intestines, and for absorption of fluid and solutes from it. The epithelium is absorptive, columnar, but villi or absent. Adequate lubrication for passage of its contents is provided by numerous goblet cells scattered in the crypts as well as on the surface of the mucous membrane. The presence of numerous solitary lymphatic follicles provides protection against bacteria present in the lumen of the intestine. Relevant features The relevant features of the large intestine are as follows, 1. The large intestine is wider in caliber than the small intestine. The caliber is greatest at its commencement, and gradually diminishes towards the rectum where it is dilated to form the rectal ampulla just above the anal canal. 2. The greater part of the large intestine is axed, except for the appendix, the transverse colon and the sigmoid colon. 3. The longitudinal muscle coat forms only a thin layer in this part of the gut. The greater part of it forms three ribbon-like bands, called the tentacoli. Proximally the tenyi converge at the base of the appendix, and distally they spread out on the terminal part of the sigmoid colon to become continuous with the longitudinal muscle coat of the rectum. In the cecum, the ascending colon, the descending colon and sigmoid colon and sigmoid colon the positions of tenia are anterior or tenia libera, posteromedial or tenia mesocolica and posterolateral or tenia omentalis but in the transverse colon the corresponding positions of tenia are inferior, posterior, and superior. One tenia, tenia libera, is placed anteriorly in the cecum, ascending, descending and sigmoid colon, but is placed inferiorly in the transverse colon. Second tenia, tenia mesocolica is present on the posteromedial surface of cecum, ascending, descending and sigmoid colon, 
but is placed posteriorly on transverse colon at the site of attachment of the transverse mesocolon. Thirtenia, memo omentalis, is situated posterolaterally in cecum, ascending, descending and sigmoid colon, but is situated on the anterosuperior surface of transverse colon where layers 3 and 4 of greater omentum meet the transverse colon. This change in position is due to twist in transverse colon. 4. Since the tenyi are shorter than the circular muscle coat, the colon is puckered and sacculated. 5. Small beige of peritoneum filled with fat and called the appendices epiploici are scattered. Over the surface of the large intestine, except for the appendix, the cecum, and the rectum. These are most numerous on the sides of the sigmoid colon and on the posterior surface of the transverse colon. The differences between the small and large intestine are summarized in 5. The blood supply to the colon is derived from the marginal artery of Drummond. It is formed by colic branches of superior and inferior mesenteric arteries. Terminal branches from the marginal artery are distributed to the intestine as long and short vessels, nose long and vasa brevia. The long arteries divide into anterior and posterior branches close to the mesocolic tenia to pass between the serous and muscular coats and reach the amisocolic tenia. They gradually pierce the muscular coat and reach the submucosa. The anastomosis between the two amisocolic tenia is extremely poor. So longitudinal incisions should be made along this line. Short branches arise either from the marginal artery or from the long branches, and the majority of them at once sink into the bowel wall at the mesocolic border. The short and long branches together thus provide the mesocolic region of the wall with abundant blood supply. It is only the amisocolic region which has scanty blood supply. Subserous coat of long branches is intimately related to appendices epiploici, to which they contribute branches. During removal of these appendages care must be taken not to pull on them in order to avoid traction on the subjacent vessel. Bowel wall is weakened where it is pierced by the vessels and at the sites of attachment of appendices epiploici. Mucosa may herniate in these situations causing diverticulosis, with associated dangers of diverticulitis, fibrosis, and stricture. Six lymph from the large intestine passes through four sets of lymph nodes. A. Epicolic lymph nodes, lying on the wall of the gut. B. Porocolic nodes, on the medial side of the ascending and descending colon and near the mesocolic border of the transverse and sigmoid colon. C. Intermediate nodes, on the main branches of the vessels. D. Terminal nodes, on the superior and inferior mesenteric vessels. In carcinoma of the colon, the related paracolic and intermediate lymph nodes have to be removed. Their removal is possible only after the ligature O1 the main branch of the superior or inferior mesenteric artery along which the involved lymph nodes lie. It is necessary, therefore, to remove a large segment of the bowel than is actually required by the extent of the disease, in order to avoid gangrene as a result of interference with the blood supply. It is always wise to remove the whole portion of the bowel supplied by the ligated vessel. 7. The nerve supply of the large intestine, barring the lower half of the anal canal, is both sympathetic and parasympathetic. The midgut territory receives its sympathetic supply from the coeliac and superior mesenteric ganglia, T11 to L1, and its parasympathetic supply from the vagus. Both types of nerves are distributed to the gut through the superior mesenteric plexus. The hindgut territory receives its sympathetic supply from the lumbar sympathetic chain, LL, L2, and its parasympathetic supply from the pelvic splanchnic nerve, nervi aerogenes, both via the superior hypogastric and inferior mesenteric plex uses. Some parasympathetic fibers reach the colon along the posterior abdominal wall. The ultimate distribution of nerves in the gut is similar to that in the wall of the small intestine. The parasympathetic nerves are motor to the large intestine and inhibitory to the internal anal sphincter. The sympathetic nerves are largely vasomotor, but also motor to the internal anal sphincter, and inhibitory to colon. Pain impulses from the gut up to the descending colon travel through the sympathetic nerves, and from the sigmoid colon and rectum through the pelvic splanchnic nerves. Functions of colon, the functions of the colon are as follow. 1. Lubrication of faces by mucus. 
2 absorption of the water salts and the other solutes. 3 bacterial flora or colon synthesizes vitamin B4 mucoid secretion of colon is rich in antibodies of IgA group, which protect it from invasion by microorganisms. 5 The microvilli, apical tufts, of some columnar cells serve a sensory function. Large intestine can be directly viewed by a procedure called colonoscopy. Diverticulum is a small evagination of mucous membrane of colon at the entry point of the arteries. Its inflammation is called diverticulitis. Dissection. Turn the cecum upwards and identify its posterior relations. Incise the lateral wall of the cecum and locate the iliacecal orifice and its associated valve. Below the iliacecal valve identify the orifice of the vermiform appendix. Features. Cecum is a large blind sac, Latin blind, forming the commencement of the large intestine. It is situated in the right iliac fossa, above the lateral half of inguina L ligament. It communicates superiorly with ascending colon, medially at the level of cecocolic junction with ilium, and posteromedially with the appendix. Dimensions It is 6 cm long and 7.5 cm broad. It is one of those organs of the body that have greater width than the length. The other examples are the prostate, pons, and pituitary. Development The cecum and appendix develop from the cecal bud arising from the post-arterial segment of the midgut loop. The proximal part of the bud dilates to form the cecum. The distal part remains narrow to form the appendix. Thus initially the appendix arises from the apex of the cecum. However, due to rapid growth of the lateral wall of the cecum, the attachment of the appendix shifts medially. Iliacecal valve the lower end of the ilium opens on the posteromedial aspect of the cecocolic junction. The iliacecal opening is guarded by the iliacecal valve. Structure, the valve has two lips and two frenula. One the upper lip is horizontal and lies at the iliacolic junction. The lower lip is longer and concave, and lies at the iliacecal junction. The two NJA are formed by the fusion of the lips at the ends of the aperture. These are the left or anterior and the right or posterior frenula. The left end of the aperture is rounded, and the right end narrow and pointed. Control and mechanism 1 The valve is actively closed by sympathetic nerves, which cause tonic contraction of the iliacecal sphincter. 2 It is mechanically closed by distension of the cecum. Functions It prevent reflux from cecum to lum. 1. It regulates the passage of ileal contents into the cecum, and prevents them from passing too quickly. Cecum is commonly involved in, a amoebiasis causing amoebic dysentery, a intestinal tuberculosis, iliacecal tuberculosis, and carcinoma. b. Inflammation of cecum is known as cecitis or tiflitis. Vermiform appendix. This is a worm-like diverticulum arising from the posteromedial waffle, of the cecum, about 2 cm below the iliacecal orifice. Dimensions The length varies from 2 to 20 cm with an average of 9 cm. It is longer in children than in adults. The diameter is about 5 mm. The lumen is quite narrow and may be obliterated after mid-adult life. Positions The appendix lies in the right iliac fossa. Although the base of the appendix is fixed, the tip can point in any direction, as described below. The positions are often compared to those of the hour hand of a clock. The appendix may pass upwards and to the right. This is paracolic or 11 o'clock position. It may lie behind the cecum or colon, known as retrocecal or 12 o'clock position. This is the commonest position of appendix, about 65%. The appendix may pass upwards and to the left. It points towards the spleen. This is the splenic or 2 o'clock position. The appendix may lie in front of the ilium, preleal, or behind the ilium, postileal. The postileal type is most dangerous type. It may pass horizontally to the left, as if pointing to the sacral promontory called promontoric or 3 o'clock position. It may descend into the pelvis called pelvic or 4 o'clock position. This is the second most common position about 30%. It may lie below the cecum, 
subsequal, and may point towards the inguinal ligament called as mid-inguinal or 6 o'clock position. Appendicular orifice. 1. The appendicular orifice situated on the posteromedial aspect of the cecum 2 cm below the iliacecal orifice. 2. The appendicular orifice is occasionally guarded by an indistinct semilunar fold of the mucous membrane, known as the safer o slash gerlach. 3. The orifice is marked on the surface by a point situated 2 cm below the junction of transtubercular and right lateral planes. Formed bumi s point is the site of maximum tenderness. In appendicitis, the point lies at the junction of lateral one-third and medial two-thirds of line joining the right anterior superior iliac spine to umbilicus. Lumen of appendix. It is quite small and may be partially or completely obliterated after mid-adult life. Peritoneal relations. The appendix is suspended by a small, triangular fold of peritoneum, called the mesoappendix, or appendicular mesentery. The fold passes upwards behind the ilium, and is attached to the left layer of the mesentery. Blood supply. The appendicular artery is a branch of the lower division of the iliacolic artery. It runs behind the terminal part of the ilium and enters the mesoappendix at a short distance from its base. Here it gives a recurrent branch which anastomoses with a branch of the posterior cecal artery. The main artery runs towards the tip of the appendix lying at first near to and then in the free border of the mesoappendix. The terminal part of the artery lies actually on the wall of the appendix. Blood from the appendix is drained by the appendicular, iliacolic, and superior mesenteric veins, to the portal vein. Nerve supply. Sympathetic nerves are derived from thoracic 9 and 10 segments through the coeliac plexus. Parasympathetic nerves are derived from the vagus. Referred pain of appendix is felt at umbilicus, similar to that of small intestine and testis. Lymphotic drainage. Most of the lymphatics pass directly to the iliacolic nodes, but a few of them pass indirectly through the appendicular nodes situated in the mesoappendix. Histology. The lumen of appendix is very narrow. There are no villi. The epithelium invaginates to form crypts of Lieberkuhn. Muscularis mucosi is ill-defined. SBHM coso reveals many lymphoid masses. That is why it is called the abdominal tonsil. Muscularis externa comprises two layers. Outermost is the serous layer. Inflammation of the appendix is known as appendicitis seen in adolescent age. In this condition, it is usually necessary to remove the appendix. The operation for removal of the appendix is called appendicectomy. Some anatomical facts relevant to the diagnosis and treatment of appendicitis are as follows. Pain caused by appendicitis is first felt in the region of the umbilicus. This is referred pain. Both the fact that both the appendix and the umbilicus are innervated by segment T10 of the spinal cord, appendix by sympathetic fibers and umbilicus by somatic fibers. With increasing inflammation pain is felt in the right iliac fossa. This is caused by involvement of the parietal peritoneum of the region, remember that parietal peritoneum is sensitive to pain, but visceral peritoneum is not appendicitis is common because, one presence of lymphatic follicles in submucosa. Two appendicular artery is an end artery. As the lumen is small it gets obstructed by phacolith. Gaps in muscular eye is external cause fast spread of infection. McBurney's point is the site of maximum tenderness in appendicitis. The point lies at the junction of the lateral one-third and the medial two-thirds of the line joining the umbilicus to the right anterior superior iliac spine. It corresponds, roughly, to the position of the base of the appendix. Examination of a case of acute appendicitis reveals following physical signs. A hyperesthesia in the right iliac fossa B tenderness at McBurney's point. C muscle guard and rebound tenderness over the appendix. When the appendix is retrocecal, extension of the hip joint may cause pain because the appendix is disturbed by stretching of the psoas major muscle. In pelvic appendicitis pain may be felt when the thigh is flexed and medially rotated, because the obturator internus is stretched. Appendicular dyspepsia. Chronic appendicitis produces dyspepsia resembling disease of stomach, duodenum, or gallbladder. 
it is due to passage of infected lymph to the subpyloric nodes which cause irritation of pylorus. There is history of earlier acute appendicitis. Ascending colon is about 12.5 cm long and extends from the cecum to the inferior surface of the right lobe of the liver. Here it bends to the left to form the right colic flexure. It is covered by peritoneum on three sides. Anteriorly, it is related to the coils of small intestine, the right edge of the greater omentum, and the anterior abdominal wall. Posteriorly, it is related to the iliacus, the quadratus lumborum, the transversus abdominis, the lateral cutaneous, ilioinguinal, and iliohippogastric nerves and the right kidney right colic flexure, hepatic flexure. Right colic flexure lies at the junction of the ascending colon and transverse colon. Here the colon bends forwards, downwards, and to the left. The flexure lies on the lower part of right kidney. Anterosuperiorly, it is related to the colic impression on inferior surface of the right lobe of liver. Transverse colon Transverse colon is about 50 cm long and extend across the abdomen from the right colic flexure to the left colic flexure. Actually it is not transverse, but hangs low as a loop to a variable extent. It is suspended by the transverse mesocolon attached to the anterior border of pancreas, and has a wide range of mobility. Anteriorly, it is related to the greater omentum and to the anterior abdominal wall. Posteriorly, it is related to the second part of the duodenum, the head of the pancreas, and to coils of small intestine. Left colic flexure flexure. Left colic flexure lies at the junction of the transverse colon and the descending colon. Here the colon bends downwards, and backwards. The flexure lies on the lower part of the left kidney and diaphragm, behind the stomach, and below the anterior end of the spleen. The flexure is attached to the 11th rib, in the mid-axillary line, by a horizontal fold of peritoneum, called the phrenicoccalic ligament. This ligament supports the spleen and forms a partial upper limit of the left paracolic gutter. Descending colon is about 25 cm long and extends from the left colic flexure to the sigmoid colon. It runs vertically up to the iliac crest, and then inclines medially on the iliacus and psoas major to reach the pelvic brim, where it is continuous with the sigmoid colon. The descending colon is narrower than the ascending colon. Anteriorly, it is related to the coils of small intestine. Posteriorly, it is related to the transversus abdominis, the quadratus lumborum, the iliacus, and psoas muscles, the iliohippogastric, ilioinguinal, lateral cutaneous, femoral, and genitofemoral nerves, the gonadal and external iliac vessels. Sigmoid colon, pelvic colon. Sigmoid colon is about 37.5 cm long, and extends from the pelvic brim to the third piece of the sacrum, where it becomes the rectum. It forms a sinuous loop, and hangs down in pelvis over the bladder and uterus. Occasionally, it is very short, and takes a straight course. It is suspended by the sigmoid mesocolon and is covered by coils of small intestine. The rectum and the anal canal are described later. Histology of colon Mucous membrane it shows only in vagination to form deep crypts of Lieberkuhn. Lining epithelium is of columnar cells with intervening goblet cells. Muscularis mucosi is well defined. Submucosa. Contains solitary lymphoid follicles with the Meissner's plexus of nerves. Muscularis externo. Outer longitudinal coat is thickened at three places to form tenia coli. Inner coat is of circular fibers. Outermost layer is serous slash adventitia. Development. Duodenum. During rotation of stomach, the C-shaped duodenum falls to the right. At the same time it lies against posterior abdominal wall and gets retroperitoneal. Duodenum develops partly from foregut and partly from midgut. Till the origin of hepatic butt it develops from foregut, i.e. first and upper half of second part. The remaining two and a half parts arise from midgut. Duodenum is supplied both by branches of coeliac axis, artery of foregut, and by branches of superior mesenteric artery, artery of midgut. Midgut. It gives rise to the part of duodenum distal to the opening of bile duct, jejunum, 
ilium, cecum, vermiform appendix, ascending colon, hepatic flexure and right two-thirds of transverse colon. Midgut is in the form of primary intestinal loop. At the apex of the loop it is connected to the yolk SAE and grows very rapidly during sixth week, so much so that it protrudes into the umbilical cord. This is called physiological herniation. After an interval of four weeks, i.e. at tenth week it returns back into the enlarged abdominal cavity. During this herniation and return the midgut loop rotates by 270 degrees in a counterclockwise direction. Hindgut Its cranial part gives rise to left one-third of transverse colon, descending colon, pelvic colon, proximal part of rectum. The distal part of hindgut is dilated to form the cloaca, which gets separated by urorectal septum into a posterior part the anorectal canal and an anterior part the primitive urogenital sinus. The anorectal canal forms distal part of rectum and proximal part of anal canal. Distal part of anal canal is formed from an invagination of surface ectoderm called the proctodium. Mnemonics Meckel's diverticulum details 2 inches long 2 feet from end of ilium 2 times more common in men 2% occurrence in population 2 types of tissues may be present Small intestine is characterized by the evaginations called the villi. Most of the duodenum is fixed and retroperitoneal. Second part of duodenum contains the openings of bile and pancreatic ducts. Third part of duodenum is crossed anteriorly by superior mesenteric vessels. Duodenal cap is triangular shadow of its first part seen in B.A. meal, X-ray. Transverse colon is the most mobile part of large intestine. Meckel's diverticulum is the proximal persistent part of vitellointestinal duct. Cecum is broader than longer. The commonest position of vermiform appendix is retrocecal. Pain of early appendicitis is referred to the region of umbilicus. The visceral peritoneum of appendix receives supply from lesser splanchnic nerve, arising from T10 sympathetic ganglion and T10 segment of spinal cord. Same segment receives sensation from the umbilical area. Later appendicitis pain is localized to right iliac fossa. McBurney's point is a point at the junction of medial two-third and lateral one-third of a line joining umbilicus to the right anterior superior iliac spine. Iliacecal junction is the commonest site of TB of intestines. Cancer of colon mostly occurs at rectosigmoid junction.